casualties being called away, or for investigators. Pretty much the investigator goes around and they control when they go on and off air. They go pretty much like the, what their title is, investigators. They go investigate the following areas to make sure nothing else is beyond what we got reported. So right here, in this 45 minute cylinder, so inside the cylinder, 4,500 PSI comes out of that when you open this bottle. Then it goes to your first stage regulator, breaks it down to 100 PSI. Even then, you still can't breathe that. Then it goes to your second stage regulator, which also has a vibrate, uh, vibro alert in there. So when it, when this first breaks down to 0 0.05 or atmospheric pressure to, for you to breathe, at about 10 minutes left of air, you'll start to hear it go off. Yeah, the bell starts going off, and then say this doesn't work, say your mask doesn't work, you have this purge valve right here. You just turn this, and it'll give you a constant flow so you can get out that space and get a new mask. It has a negative pressure seal, so basically when you breathe in, it'll suck to your face, and it'll pop that valve, which allows the airflow to come in. When you breathe out, it'll breathe, go out through the vents that are provided in that mask for you. Huh? Yeah, so when you hear that first initial pop, that's you actually starting to breathe. You also have your indicator right here, which tells you how much air approximately you have. It can be off by plus or minus 500 PSI, which is a lot. That's roughly about five minutes or so of air, which is a matter of life or death. Then on the back of the bottle, you have another indication that directly tells you how much you actually have left in the bottle. It's measured off of PSI, it's actually not measured off of minutes, but they say about 100 PSI is about one minute of breathing, breathing time. Along with this going on, you have Talisman, or what we like to call 50, Naval Firefighting Thermal Imager. This has two different modes. The one we primarily use is the thermal, which basically tells you what's hot and what's not. The hot stuff is white, the stuff that's cooler is a darker shade or it's almost entirely black. I'm going to pass it around and you guys can actually see the images. So, who uses that? The team leader on your fire team, when you're going into a space, you can't see a fire clearly because one, either it's too smoky or it's behind stuff. So you use that to indicate where hot is coming from. Like I said, the white stuff will tell you that it's hot. We have two different methods of combating a fire, direct and indirect. Directly, you clearly put your firefighting agent on the fire to hopefully put it out. Then indirectly, you can't really get to it, so you pretty much bounce your fire or your excuse me, your water off the wall. Oh, yeah. So it bounces yeah, off, cool. then we call that indirectly. You're pretty much not directly in the face of that fire put into there. That is thermal. The FMV <laughs> over here, it has two different layers. It has your, uh, the inner shell, then your outer shell. It's estimated anywhere from about 1,000 to 2,000 withstanding uh, Fahrenheit. They say fires can get up to about 2,000 Fahrenheit in less than 10 minutes. So that's a big issue there. Also with firefighting, you also gotta de-smoke spaces because obviously when something burns, smoke is produced. So we got two pieces of machinery. This first one right here is your Ramp Fan 2000. It's called that because it moves 2,000 cubic feet of air per minute. The way this is driven is that there's a turbine in here that's driven by our fireman which operates at 150 psi. You got an inlet and a discharge. Along with you have an inlet and a discharge on the smoking. As you can tell, this arrow tells you exactly where the air is going to be going. It's like it from here, put it in it over there. They made it sailor proof. <laughs> the bad thing about this is though, like I said, it does only move 2,000 cubic feet of air. And also, like I said, since so it's turbine driven, it also creates a static electricity, which you need to ground it with this right here. So you got to put it on some bare metal. Back over here, you got your box fan. That box fan is rated at 3,200 cubic feet of air. So this bar, we like to put it in the door frame because we all know heat and smoke likes to rise, right? So we want this higher up in the door frame so you can de-smoke that space a lot quicker. The good part about this, like I said, 3,200 cubic feet, it can move. The bad part is it has to be in conjunction with the space that has natural ventilation. What I mean by that, I there's a fire here, I'm just smoking from there, so I'm 
push the smoke out here, this naturally ventilated space so it naturally dissipates within the air. That's the benefit and the disadvantage of using these two different types. They have the advantage and disadvantage. Along with that, you also got to dewater what you put into that space, right? So we have a few different pumps up here to show you what we got to use to dewater that space. So you got your derby shard right here, and DC3 over here is going to show you the different jets that are actually inside that, that actually allows to move. The benefits of these two is there's no moving parts except for you got to connect it to the fire main. Alright, and now to the elevator. That's awesome. <laughs> look at this. Look at it. 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 So you guys ever like slide down these or <laughs> get in trouble for doing that? Yeah, we get in trouble for it. Like I've had like five people yell at me for it. <laughs> a little bit easier than uh, you know walking down though. Right. Have a good one, man.
don't know if anybody went to the tent. Yeah, we are. Uh, 